that the effects are not being felt or are they I'm looking for I'm shaking the table <laughs> this explains Nigeria's 115th position out of a possible 130 on the global human capital index according to that index, African countries such as Rwanda, Ghana, Cameroon, Mauritius, and Kenya are rated far above Nigeria. With this report, it is obvious that the government needs to take the issue of human capital development more seriously if we are to survive, talk less, or compete anywhere. In the global economy, countries like United States, Denmark, Germany, New Zealand, Switzerland, forgive me, Sweden, Slovenia and Austria, who make up the top 10 ranked nations, have recognized the concept of human capital development as a national policy upon which its next generation will lay its foundation and compete favorably and thrive. Finland is a spectacular, spectacular example of a country which is carefully harnessing its human capital for rapid economic growth. It benefits from a well-educated population with the second best education, survival rate, and highest rate for the quality of primary schools. Its 24 to 54 age group core working population shows the highest tertiary education attainment rate in Europe and Central Asia region but also second best overall in the world. Now, based on the WEF Executive Opinion Survey, Finland is also the country with the overall highest score on the ease of finding skills employees, with even its 54, 55 to 64 age group possessing the world's highest attainment rate of tertiary education, highlighting the continuing long-term benefits of past human capital investments. To increase business opportunities to its 5.5 million population, its government has made it imperative to the economy to be open and accessible to all those who want to start businesses. Its ease of doing business is ranked at 13, while the one in Nigeria that is being told to us every day um, is ranked 169 as at last year. Now, talent, not capital, will be the key factor linking innovation, competitiveness, competitiveness and growth in the 21st century, says Klaus Schwab, the founder and executive chairman of the World Economic Forum. To make the changes necessary, to unlock the world's latent talent, and hence its growth potential, we must look beyond campaign cycles and quarterly reports Dialogues, collaboration, and partnerships between all sectors are crucial for adaptation, educational institutions, governments, and business. With Nigeria's population expected to overtake that of the United States by 2050, according to the United Nations report, this message couldn't have come at a better time. His voice, one which represents a moral compass, drives on the point that many of us have been making for so long. Elaborate plans are well and good, but this must be implemented with purposiveness, a visionary leader, and a precision of a surgeon. If the man on the street cannot attest to the benefit from the government policies designed for him to improve his welfare, then they don't exist. There are no two ways about it. No amount of plans or sugar quoting can displace the fact that more and more people are living less than a dollar a day in Nigeria. That many children cannot go to school or afford schools that can give them quality education. That our graduates half the time are unemployable that women are dying in their thousands daily in maternity wards, that more and more Nigerians of working age are leaving the country due to dwindling opportunities, that Canada is draining our workforce, that boasting 
that the best doctors in America are Nigerians is no longer cool because thousands are languishing on incompetent beds in the hospitals here. That our government officials up onto presidential, presidency level has always flown out of the country in the last 19 years of democracy for medical checks. That we train engineers, but they cannot fix our roads. We import Chinese and the others is shameful. That we have the highest population in Africa means our first resource as a nation is human capital. Means that Nigeria should be training its people and sending them to the world to go and be the standard and examples. That the guys who are coming here to work on our roads, in our companies, come as consultants with fat salaries, expatriate packages, but our best doctors that we boast of abroad go there forcing themselves into the system. Shemoni, we have been we marrying to get papers. A few, because these doctors we talk about, but many stuck. They can't go forward, they can't come back home. In this fourth revolution, industrial revolution of science and technology, of robotics and artificial intelligence, we are celebrating production of pencils and toothpick. With a generation that its currency is talent, yet piracy is at its highest with no federal might to combat it. No protection for these young people who without education, without any system, any help from any government, any institution, have found a way to make themselves into Whiskids and Davido and Omotola and Genevieve. But the least we can do to protect their craft and help them earn a decent living, we can't do. We can't boast of one internationally standardized art school. We can't boast of our own mini Silicon Valley for a generation that talent and technology is their currency. Bill Gates has delivered this profound message. It is up to us. The people in this room and many more woke individuals, as I like to say, to sustain the message and make demands for human capital development. Make it a sustainable cornerstone for our national growth. For us to demand of those we have contracted to supply us governance, to indeed supply, to cast our votes in the next election and in every cycle that comes after that, asking four key questions. Is he or she capable? Is he or she competent? Is he or she with the capacity required? Does he or she present a vision and a roadmap that you believe in. And for us to take advantage, to develop our own capacity at every opportunity. If you see an application for a PhD, apply for it. If you see a fellowship, apply for it. Anything you see that can help you improve your competence, improve your capacity, apply for it. Gain knowledge and make it a point of duty to ensure that one person around you also has the same opportunity. They always say that either the people will change a nation or one person, a good leader. I believe in both. While we look for good leaders, we the people also need to take responsibility and ensure that we also do our best for ourselves and our fellow men. Enough of buying a generator. You that you live in one room, I live in one room, then you buy a generator and name it, I better pass my neighbor. Enough of us trying to compete and outdo each other. We can do better. We can go further as a collective. So ladies and gentlemen, we don't have more time. Let's get to work. The time is now. Thank you.